We have the privilege of having Sue Nelson with us today. Sue is the resource person and technical consultant for USA Swimming, and she does a great deal of work with drowning prevention, obviously, but also with Learn to Swim programs, clinics, workshops, swimposiums, the whole nine yards. So without further ado, take it away, Sue. Thank you. We got this. You, you can have that one. Um, I will try to meet your expectations since I am not Julie. I do not do data statistics. However, I do provide you with some great new information I think you'll be excited to take back home with you. I'm going to put on a couple of hats today. I'm going to put on my NDPA hat, National Drowning Prevention Alliance. I'm on one of the board members. And we were fortunate enough to be involved with the CPSC, all these acronyms that you have to learn, uh, Consumer Product Safety Commission. Uh, we received a grant from the CPSC in 2011. And we were um, directed to develop a very comprehensive drowning prevention plan that would have extension to it. It would not just be an eight-week program, but it would be an ongoing, something that the community in the U.S. could use ongoing. This happens to be one of the uh, pieces of that plan. And I am honored as USA Swimming uh, staff to be able to present this because we are also partners with this organization, the Safer 3 Water Safety Foundation. So all of these groups work together to try to make a difference in drowning prevention. So we're going to focus on a national curriculum that was developed uh, that is appropriate for kindergarten through second grade. And we're going to try to break it down for you. Um, and then we're going to ask you, how many teachers do we have in here? We don't know. Absolutely. That's great. How many coaches do we have in here? Perfect. How many um, aquatic coordinators do we have? Aquatic supervisors? Learn to swim instructors? Perfect. You're the perfect audience. Just what I needed. Okay, we did not go through this. So let's do this. So what we want to start off with is... I want to plant the seed so you can cultivate where drowning prevention is going to go. I don't want to start in the middle of the continuum. I want to start at the very, very beginning, and that's early intervention. That's kindergarten through second grade. I believe, and I'm going to say I because I am very passionate about this. I think USA Swimming is. I think NDPA is. But we want to turn it into I right now so that you can become that passionate person that's going to carry this forward. And I think the pools and the schools are our key to making a change in the U.S. If you have not noticed, the statistics have not changed in, I know for a fact, the last 10 years. I have friends who tell me they have not changed that much in the last 20 years. That's really scary because you guys are all working your tails off and we're just going around in a circle. We have new ideas. They come. They go. We need to have some impact. So I think this might be a way. And Make a Splash Initiative has joined this effort with the Safer Three to see that not only our swim schools are talking the language of a Safer Three, but our schools can talk that. As I said, these are the groups right now who are key players in trying to make change. The CPSC, NDPA, Safe for Three Water Safety Foundation, and the Make a Splash Initiative. How many, do we have any local partners in here? Make a Splash local partners. Excellent. Oh, that's right. There we go. So a Make a Splash local partner would be the water side. That's the provider of swim lessons. We're going to start and talk about the dry side of water safety.
We've already heard this morning, if you were in front of some of our other tracks, that we want to identify what is a safer three. And that is pulling out, identifying the risk. If you live in the Midwest, if you live on a coast, if you live on uh, a lot of rivers, a lot of canals, identify those risks. And then implement those strategies to address those issues. And then responsibly maintaining them, ongoing, keep it going. So we want you to, where is your risk? And how are we going to make that difference? So we want people to become comfortable with the three R's, safer water, safer kids, or safer people, and safer responses. That's the simplistic piece of this whole curriculum. We know that early growth indicators compromise are the key learning areas. And we're going to go over today and show you that this curriculum encompasses all of these indicators. So this course that you're going to receive, if we could have each person have this, that would be helpful. This curriculum has five lessons, and if done just sitting down at one time, it would be 10 hours. However, it's very flexible, and you can create it and develop it and utilize it in many ways. But it is written to meet national standards and learning goals. What is the probably the number one uh, barrier when you have gone to a school and say, I have this great idea. Uh, we also work with the other groups. I have this storybook, and I want to come in, and I want to read it to your class. I want to talk about water safety. What's the first thing to go? What do they say? Uh, it's not part of the curriculum. It's too much time. I don't have time to do it on top of everything else I, I do. And so it's pushed back. And water safety, as we all know, needs to come up to the surface as just like the um, car seat, seat belt. It was early intervention that made those programs go. This is what we need to do. And we need your help. We need to find a way to get into the schools. I personally have an experience, uh, Danville, Illinois is about 70 miles, 70 plus miles west of here, my hometown. This year, we had two drownings, one near drowning. And it, it hit home because nine years ago, we left Danville, Illinois, left an aquatic center who provided this kind of service to our community. And so, we decided we're coming back. We're working with the parochial schools. We're working with District 118. But it wasn't just working with the teacher. We had to hit it hard. We sent emails out to the mayor of the town. We sent emails out to the superintendent and, and listed out the fact that we knew they had a drowning in town. And we have possibly a solution. And we wanted to have a meeting. And so we brought the director of the YMCA in. And we're going to begin talks on implementing this into their school systems. So this is the basic. We don't have time to go through every single lesson. But what we are going to do is you just received lesson one. This Safer 3 curriculum comes in two formats. You can go online to the NDPA, and you can download it for free and use the ability of cut and paste and any way that you would like to implement it. You can go on to the Safer 3 Water Safety Foundation, and you can also uh, purchase uh, sub supplements to add to what you want to provide for your, your lessons. The second way is an online version that we were able to implement because of the grant that we received. And this version actually is very interactive. Um, it has a PowerPoint presentation. You do not have to have a water background to even present this. So we're presenting the idea to you 
So you can put your thinking hats on, how can I implement this program? Um, it will be, um, I just lost my train of thought. It just went zoom and gone. So the, the presentation can be developed in many ways. You can take one lesson, you can take the multiple lessons, you can uh, add it in all one month, you can spread it out over the weeks, sort of being done multiple ways. The, the one piece that really struck me, because again, we want to develop something that's gonna be ongoing and somebody will be excited to use year after year. And we received this testimony from um, a teacher, and she, she implemented the program with her primary students. Those students came back the second year. Her goal was to see what they had remembered, and she was very, very happy with the outcome going from year to year. So we know the curriculum, the characters, the message, is written so that the children are retaining that information. So what we're going to do today, and as another presenter said, I don't bring in the internet because it's not trustworthy. Well, what we're going to do, we're, we're going to try it. And I want your help. Okay, let's see. I'm going to go out. I'm going to go. Now, anyone in the room who would want to have access to this lesson, it's, it, this happens to be the full set of lessons, but I can give you a password, a username, to go in and look through lesson one, which you have the hard copy of in front of you. So remember, you can download it, use it this way, take the materials, go through it day to day, or you can go online. So please let me know if you would like to do that. Now what we're going to do is, I've already brought this up. This is Save for Three Lesson, Pre-K through Second Grade, Lesson 1. Gives you the topics and the objectives. Tells you your equipment, the props that you're going to need. Key terms we're going to be working with in this chapter. Provide you, let's look at this, activity details. Print these materials before starting lesson one. You are going to have this for each one of your children. You can do this with a projector. And you can also do it, like I say, with the copy that you have in front of you. What I'm wanting from you is, how do I implement this? How do I get into the schools with this? Do I do all five lessons? Do I do one? We have some who actually, oh, don't tell me this. And this is why you don't. We'll try one more time, and then we're just going to go to the Okay, lesson learned, don't use the internet. So what we're gonna do is to take your lesson one. I think the first things that, that in reality, you have to know what the lesson is all about. You have to know what the program is about before you can present it. Our recommendations, in our view, at USA Swimming, we want the teachers and the swim instructors to be talking the same language. We would like to see this become the dry side of water safety, kindergarten through second grade, and then have that be the prerequisite to go to swimming lessons. That presentation in itself might catch or hook somebody into going, ah, that's not a bad idea. Or you use this if you do not have a pool, we still need children to know about water safety. 
and now this can be done in the classroom. Some of the ways that I have thought about because of the feedback that we get, I do not have time to present this. This program is written that you can actually teach it in a math class. And that will go through. If you look through here, let's do literacy connection. Language, vocabulary, modeling, these are all the things that in any other course, whatever topic that teacher decides to present, it is written in a format that this will be acceptable. You just have to get to that person to let them know this is not adding anything to their hours. This is not adding any more learning power. This is about planning, planning for the next year. Don't try and rush this in. You really have to understand it. Prepare for it just like they would with the new school year. And if you start this year to present for next year, that's your ideal. Otherwise, they become very overwhelmed, uh, turn it off. You know, you, we have to go prepared. We have to have statistics. The little card that we put on the table right here, that to me would be enough to say, ooh, I need to be involved with this. Four and under, it's the third leading cause of death. One to four, the number one cause of death. Be prepared, use NDPA, use CPSC, use Safer 3 to find the things that you need to go in to be prepared. You have to be prepared to present this. On a math, let's go to math, display the Safer 3 PALS. They're going to learn about Bongo. Everything is laid out for that teacher. If we could have our internet, you would see the PowerPoint that is prepared already for you. You do not have to do anything to other than review it, learn about it, and be comfortable in your presentation because on the side has all of the information for you, all written out. And at that point, we also, Fortunately, we have one of the board of directors from the Safer 3 Water Safety Foundation, and you've probably been by his table, um, would be able to help you as well because they implement the program. Who are you going to implement with? If you are a swim school and you have access to this, where are you going to take it? Are you going to take it to a day daycare? Are you going to go to an elementary school? Are you going to... Um, in my situation, if I were to get back into the private business, I would make sure that my staff at the pool knows this inside and out so that when they come from the school, they're talking the same language. We find out one of the bridges from learn to swim to swim team is that these two do not talk the same language. And then they leave, children leave the learn to swim comfort field and go to the coaching area, they want to turn around and go back the other way because they don't talk the same language. So this is an opportunity for you to connect wherever you may. It could be a swim club. You could take all of this and implement it. How many of you do camps? You could implement it yourself. You do not have to go to a school. That is what's so great about this is the message is there. It's teaching the kids about what they need to do to be safer. It's teaching about, I'm so sorry, about water, safer water, safer responses. So be creative and where can we utilize it and how do we go through it? What about going to a church? Talking about in that early months preparing for uh, summer, you tell some grandmas that their kids are really not safe and they need to learn how to swim and they need to learn about water safety, it's going to get done. So let's open it up and let's talk about in your community, what are some of your risks in your community? Where do you live? Where do you live? 
Florida. So we've heard about Florida quite frequently today. So you actually have this huge bodies of water around. Where do we live back here? Let's go down each site and let's see if we can identify some risk in your areas that you would really like to make a difference. I live in the northeast corner of Mississippi and we have no community pools. So the biggest risk is we have a generation of kids growing up not knowing how to swim. San Antonio, Texas. Columbus, Ohio. What are your risks? Mine are with uh, really college age students since I work for the university. So some of our, we have a Wibbit, uh, like a wipeout course, so more your high intensity, making sure that. Okay. I live here in Indianapolis, um, but I'm, I'm in the university setting, so that is a problem. I have students that want, want to do programs, and they're college students that don't know how to swim. So. Wow. See, and we've got to start at some point and say we've got to start at the beginning. And they have to know how to swim. Um, Columbus, Ohio, and pretty much the same thing. University? Uh, no, just, just uh, lakes, rivers? No, not really. I, it's just more like uh, lap swimmers that, that are like, you know, they just swim laps and they don't know their, when to stop. Or, you oh. know, I mean, I don't really have any per se with kids right now but but in your community they do right um i would say i mean i, I think we're kind of doing all the right things per se because like uh, we're, we're not doing this program we're doing red cross uh-huh um well, at least the pool that i i worked at where we kind of made sure like all the kids kind of go through all the programming and everything else and education and stuff um but I don't know. And, and to that point, most certainly, the Safer Three works with any program. Right. It works with Josh the Otter. It works with the Danger Rangers. It works with Whale's Tales. Most certainly, it is bringing in all of these other groups who are trying to make that difference as well. This just happens to be able to get into the schools because of, we hope, because of the curriculum being written towards the national standards. And if we can get through that door, think of how many kids, not just our kids going to swimming classes or camps, but every child will have this kind of education. That's sort of the dream. Where are you guys from? Uh, I'm from Iowa. Iowa. What, what yeah. do you think your risk would be? Um, I'm in the university setting as well, but for the university, our biggest concern is our international population and exchange students that come over and come swimming and they don't know how to swim. Um, but then I guess the rest of the community would be accessibility and affordability for swim lessons. Okay. Um, I supervise aquatics programs overseas, so we do a lot of day camp programs and take kids to pools that aren't in the U.S. Okay. And, and I, want you, I want to challenge you. For many, many years, I was all in my own world. And until I stepped outside of the private business, it's like, oh my gosh, these kids just don't live in this pool. They go outside of this pool. So if you have any swimming lessons going on or any water activity, we, we really, our responsibility is to make sure they're aware of what's outside your box, what's outside your pool. I'm from Pleasant Hill, California. Um, I'm in a community that is pretty pro-swimming, just being from the San Francisco Bay Area, swimming's huge, but it's often um, our struggles are accessibility and affording swim lessons for the communities around us. So I'm really intrigued on the sort of the dry side and also um, just finding out more about educating parents because I think that's a lot of where the holdback is in our area, is the parents don't know how to swim. They're not comfortable putting their kids in lessons. And so that I like this idea of building from kindergarten on up and getting the thought planted in the, or that seed planted that's so right. that they can really um, grow confident and try lessons. I That'd think that might be another step to it, yeah. absolutely. And I think what we see is the kids get excited about these little characters 
Timmy Tadpole and Sammy Starfish and Gilbert Guppy, and what are they going to do? They're going to go home and talk to mom about it, and she's going to go, what? <laughs> so this, you have to give them something exciting to talk about in a fun way with a very serious problem, and hopefully that gets home to the kids. So let's have um, someone who has a uh, opportunity of having a pool and a school real close to them. How are you going to go about getting information to them? How are you, what are your thoughts on how do I get them excited? Oh, yeah, this is just another everybody learns to swim thing. What do you need to do to get through your levels? Because it has to get up here. I believe if we, we start with us, we're the grassroots, we're the hands-on people. We've got to get it up to here to make somebody make some changes. Yes? The PTA is the start. PTA. Can we go to a, a present a, a, a PowerPoint? Oh, well. Uh, a PowerPoint presentation and make it exciting enough to say somebody's going to go, we've got to make a difference. Who else? What is the best thing? It's not what you know, but who you know. Who knows you? Who can you contact to get your foot in the door to make a difference? Because these stats are not changing. And this does say USA Swimming. So in our heads, we believe that first piece is learning to swim and then make sure that you have those other barriers in place, your, your fences, your alarms, uh, number one, supervision, of course. And uh, so if every child knows how to swim, no later than the third grade, look what's going to happen. Yes? So I think one of the, one of the challenges, and, and you know about the San Antonio challenge, I don't think that thing works very well. I'll, Loud. I'll he needs to have it for the recording. Okay. Is that the dry side piece has been missing. It's, it's a funding issue, but schools around the country are judged or rated based on their test scores. Well, there isn't testing in grades K through 2, but it does start with three. And so it becomes an issue of let's get it into K through two on that dry piece and then work the who you know and where is the funding to be able to get the schools, the kids out of school over to the pool, especially if you have satellite pools around your area. And so it is the who do you know, but also selling the, those that make the decisions that yes, we know it's important to save the lives, but the community's looking and the, and the press is writing up, well, your scores are unacceptable because. Yeah. And so the dry side is a critical piece, and, it, and I think it is who you know at that level as well. Very good, very good. We do, and we have a couple of local partners in here, and we have Step in the Swim campaign. Make a Splash Initiative provides funding for our Learn to Swim providers for just that purpose. In the whole US, it's just a drop in the bucket right now. But if we have more awareness going on, that could be enhanced. That could get a larger bucket, a larger um, number of people interested in drowning prevention. Later, tomorrow, I'm the moderator for two panels, and I try to come up with different terminology simply to show how important these people are who's on this panel. Um, and I challenge you to do the same thing, because I had a story given to me by the um, director of USA Swimming Foundation. And her very first, she was really excited. She was a young uh, coach on the deck and, or a coordinator. And she was told she was to have a water safety event or drowning prevention. 
And it was actually back then, she said, drowning prevention was a term. We didn't even use water safety. She built this whole thing up. Nobody, zero people attended. And that was really scary to her. It was really scary. It's sort of ironic now that she's the director of USA Swimming Foundation who leads saving lives and building champions. But um, different terminology. It's a serious subject, but we have a solution to it. But it seems we just go in this big circle of doing the same thing, but we expect some different outcomes. So maybe, like Coach Z says, it's the dry side that we have to really focus on. Coach? So are, are any of the, the programs, the, the Learn to Swim programs, when that 30-minute session is over, is there any extension going on where they take them from the pool right into a classroom and do some of this curriculum? Or, as I heard this morning, the need to teach parents about CPR, that when the, parent, when the kids are in having their lessons, that the classroom's going on, to get the parents out of the stands and take them into the classroom and have a CPR lesson or some other type of thing, because most of them have a sibling or something sitting there with them. I, you know, I think that would be an awesome idea. At our facility, you were required, you had to stay on site for swimming lessons. You were not allowed to drop off and run like our swimming teams are. So that would be if you had the space. But you know what? I bet you could find a hallway. I bet you could find some place to be able to implement something like that. We have, Mick, you're going to have to help me. We visited one uh, aquatic center that has, was just amazing, and they were getting involved with uh, the water safety and the school piece, and that is exactly the same plan that they were going to have. Right on site, they were going to have a program to where they would have the curriculum, the water safety curriculum, and tie it in with swimming lessons at the same time. And Wayne, if I'm not, Wayne Ziegler, Board of Directors, Safer 3, um, the curriculum is developed to be able to be implemented like this, is it not? The, the goal is to instruct the board to be able to have, be creative. Implement it, implement it however works in your system. Um, you know, use one lesson, use all the lessons, pull elements out. Our, our, you know, our goal is to get the information out there. Um, and if you have a specific situation, then the goal is m modify it to work for your situation. Don't try to cram a round hole in or, you know, a round peg in a square hole, mm -hmm. um, you might have to do some modification. Obviously, if you get in the school systems, the goal is that you, get, you give them the complete package because you don't want them to have to do any work. Exactly. Downloadable curriculum. You can implement any way. You could do it at the pool. You can combine and reach out to a daycare. Volunteer your step. There are certain times it's downtime. We all know that. That we could go in to the daycare and present a program. Like Wayne said, if we're going into the school, we don't want those teachers to have to do anything. But Mick. I think one of the, one of the things you have to be careful is don't associate this with the swimming pool. Um, only 21% of our drownings are pool related. And out of that, uh, a fraction of a percent are in public pools or commercial pools. They're mostly backyard pools. But 79% of our drownings are in open water situations, whether they're rivers, ponds, streams, or oceans, uh, buckets, or ditches. Uh, that's what we have to correct. We don't need a swimming pool for that. So sort of differentiate this in your mind. Not swimming pools. Works great with swimming pools if you're lucky enough to have one. But if you don't have a swimming pool, we still owe it to the community to be able to do the water safety, the water uh, the layers that you heard about, uh, this has to be done on dry land in classrooms. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to get the message out. Absolutely. There are other pieces to the Safer Three. We have a coloring book that we know all kids love to color at a certain time. And, of course, they're all with character. Another activity book, so you can actually go online and, and pick up these. 
If you don't feel like you can do the whole curriculum, at least you can get started with that. They have also, and this is really good, Water Safety Quest. It's a little short clip about three kids who are literally identify the safer three. What is the safer three? What's the first one? Safer water, safer kids, safer response. Three things. Almost anybody can remember three things, and that's why that's done that way. And this is a cute little cartoon that reaches in that talks about kids should take swimming lessons and how, what is the first response. The other DVD is worked into songs. How do we learn best? Singing, sing songy, rhyme. So they've developed songs with this. So again, going in, you have to know exactly what this is all about before you can sell it. You have to become comfortable with it. You need to go online and look to see what the online version is versus the downloadable. This, this is what I did. I just went on, downloaded it, put tabs on it so that I can utilize it. Yes? Um. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you were saying you could use this in conjunction with, uh, you know, Red Cross swim lessons, but I just don't see that connect, I guess. I, I feel like doesn't this kind of create that problem by coming up with this, a different program that's doing the same thing? You, had to, you know, you talked about speaking the same language, but yet you're going to go from one swim program that's running a Red Cross program that's speaking one language to this. So now all of a sudden we're just making more programs. Isn't that part of the problem? Because we're just, as opposed to putting all our efforts behind one thing, that it could actually be a driving force. We're trying to create something new that already existed. I mean, the characters, the, the education, all that sign, I mean, that's been around with the Red Cross for however long it's been around. And now this program, I feel like, is doing the same concept. I, you know, the, the dry side is way more in depth than, than the Red Cross side of it. But again, you're just creating a program that if, if a municipality or, or a, you know, a private swim club or whatever is always doing Red Cross lessons, that's generally, they're going to continue to follow that route. And all of a sudden that kid moves to a new community and they're, and they're not speaking the same language. That, uh, isn't that counterproductive? Uh, yes. However, this, this is sort of the background history. Uh, nine, ten years ago, when, when this was first being developed and talked about, just really all they had was this little coloring book and activity book. Um, the goal was to have Smokey the Bear. And everybody knows there's only one firefighter, and that's Smokey the Bear. Well, as, as time went along and working with individuals, different organizations, um, it became pretty clear that, well, I know Make a Splash is not going to give up Make a Splash, and um, Red Cross is not going to give up Whale's Tales. So there was not one, and then it became, well, the Safer Three with some of our swim schools, they have Red Cross curriculum, Learn to Swim curriculum, but they chose to do another dry side. So we're not saying one's not better than the other. We're saying we figured out no one's going to give up their logo. No one's going to give up their madra. And now they work all together. The Red Cross works with NDPA, Make a Splash, all the Learn to Swim providers, Starfish, the Y. And, and you're absolutely right. However, this one is a little more comprehensive, like you said. And the message is supervise, learn to swim, and know your risk. So. You could still do whales' tails. You could go in and have your swimmers go to a class and talk about whales' tails. Uh, and we're not trying to separate that. It's, it's another option. It's another option. We're saying if a facility, in my opinion, if a facility is offering their swim lessons, we would want that dry side. It makes sense for, in my head, 
for the children to have that same language talking. So if you're going to go to a school and you've got whales tales, use whales tales and you've got the same terminology in, in your swimming lessons. It, you're right. There is confusion, but nobody's going to give up their logo. Yes, Meg. Hey, I have one more comment, too. The Great. Red Cross, as you say, has been around forever. OK. We still have the Y. We have Swim America. We have Starfish. Yeah. Uh, we also have over 1,200 independent curriculums going on out there. They're probably not going to use whales' tails. We still have 3,200 kids that 12 and under that have drowned since fall of 2008. So they need something. This is that something. Not one better than the other, but one, one you just don't have a one-stop shop in this uh, just because Red Cross doesn't cover all the bases. Uh, so this is for use by anybody that may not be using. Um, never would I suggest that this replaces whales' tails. Uh, or the Red Cross, but they're only a single player, and we need more help. We still have too darn many kids drowning. Wayne. She has her running shoes on. That's okay. Uh, the other element is, particularly with what Sue's talking about here with the curriculum, this is new. The curriculum aspect of it, of, of you know, not going into the school with a seminar or a you know, uh, uh, going in the in the hall in the center of your school and give, doing a little 30-second thing for everybody. This is really a curriculum designed to go into the school system. And as Sue kept mentioning, it's it's built to national curriculum standards. So that, that element is not re replacing or re reproducing anything else. It's something completely new. Um, and, and much to what Mick was saying, there are a lot of organizations that do swimming that don't, aren't part of the Red Cross system. Um, I, I own a private swim school uh, uh, for my other job. This is a volunteer thing, and and we're a Red Cross program, but we use the water. We use Safer Three um, for our for our dry side. We don't not. We still use sometimes. We use a you know reach throw don't go and and uh, don't just pack it. Wear your jacket. All of those elements. They're all they're all part of the. Uh, uh, they can all be fit into the the this curriculum or this program. So, but breaking it down into three simple categories and be able to bin all the different risks into three simple, easily remembered categories associated with the three characters makes the learning much more effective. At least that's what we hope, um, particularly with the smaller children. Like, I guess just going back to what Nick said and you, I, mean, I guess... Uh, the question still left then where that gap, that hole is, like you're saying, we're still not reaching everybody where the hope is that by bringing that national curriculum based program, is that where you're hoping to fill the gap then? You know, yeah. the Red Cross has been around and, you know, Swim America and yada, 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 the list goes on and on. Why aren't they, why aren't they getting those people that you're hoping that this will, I guess, because of the school base, the dry side of it? Is that where you're going to attract those people? Is that the hope? That's one big element. Okay. Yes, and, and when it gets into the schools, and this is the whole issue, we've got to get something into the schools. We know swim instructors, swim school owners, every day try to get into the schools. Some have put up a, nope, can't come in. Nope, you're, you're for profit or nonprofit. First you have to be profit, then you have to be nonprofit. You can't get in. No, we don't have enough. So if we have a tool, that we could get in and catch the eye. If we could have a large school actually for a couple of years go through this, and then it's going to catch on. It's sort of like the ripples. If each one of you go out to your hometowns and make an effort to get it into the schools, that water safety is important, that awareness. It's not just about learning to swim to get on a swim team. That's so far, not what it is. However, our parents are putting swimming lessons in a category of dancing lessons, piano lessons, and they do not realize how important it is. And this goes through all levels of society. This just is not one group of people. This is the group of adults who are very comfortable around the water. They're the most dangerous sometimes because they assume that their children know how and what to do in the water. Absolutely. 
Coach. I think an important part of this also is if you get the curriculum into the schools, then you'll hit kids and families that don't have the resources to get out there and pay for those lessons, which can be fairly costly, or they can't get to the pool for a variety of reasons, whatever, they're working two shifts and, or, you know, all of Absolutely. that stuff. So I think getting a curriculum into the school is critical, at least to have that conversation or this packet going home and have that conversation. Oh, what do you, you know, what was it today? Yes. What'd you learn about the tadpole today? That, that kind of stuff. You know, another feed off of this, Saturday and Sunday, Mick and I actually do a regional build a pool conference. We feel, we hope we're changing the model of the pools that are being developed Whoever came up with the idea of putting pools in high schools, why would we do that? I hated that. I didn't want to get my hair wet at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I still had classes to go to. Or even worse, if you have your swimming lesson, your first hour, ugh, horrible. So building new facilities, we're out there promoting that we connect with elementary schools where they need to go and churches where they need to go so that our younger kids can follow that, learn how to swim no later than the third grade. This could be a way to help that movement as well. New aquatic centers, absolutely. Five minutes, okay, yes. Can I hold it? Oh, I like to hold microphones. Okay, have you guys worked with, um, cause I'm at the university and um, in Indiana, it's now to have a PE job, you have to be certified WSI. Uh -huh. And at, my, at Butler, you have to have your certification to graduate. But the problem is, is, you know, I've had students in my WSI classes, they take it, and they're like, you know, I got the certification, that's it. But this might be nice. I, have you guys worked with AFERD to get it into maybe the curriculum? Because I could take this back and talk with, like, my local, you know, our university people. Um, because, you know, student, like, teachers don't want to have to make lesson plans. So if they have one, it's like, okay, I'll do this. So at least there's a dry portion. But I, mean, I think if you can work with AFERD and work with them, because they're the ones that are all, where all the PE teachers are part of, um, that could be a big help to get it into the classroom, into the curriculum. So. We were aware, the past president of NDPA, Bob Agoric, of um, aquatic professor at uh, Slippery Rock University, uh, presented last year to AFRID, and I personally know that he received a link to send to everybody at his presentation to, to receive this. But most certainly, getting to that next level would be very important. That's a, a great idea. Take it one step further. Absolutely. Yes? How does it relate? When Red Cross switched with their fee program, we know that a lot of WSIs and the costs and budget how does this program relate as far as the fees and uh, speaking from a budgetary? Okay, I could say downloadable. One, one option is free. And from what I understand, and Wayne, please help me if I'm, I'm wrong. If you put a curriculum into one classroom, it's uh, $50. If you have multiple classrooms, it's $40. This was sort of our contract with the CPSC that really nobody is getting rich on this. And so, but they have tools, obviously we've had tools to develop this. And um, that's where it stands, I believe, at my understanding, is that 40 and $50, um, not bad. And that's for the whole entire classroom? Is that, or is it per person? It's per classroom. Per classroom, okay. Classroom. Yes. And, and like a non-traditional setting, what do you consider a classroom, I guess is my, so in a summer pool or whatever, that's with I, a. I would do a classroom, period, if you want to do it online, yeah. I mean, you can, you can have access to online for $50, and you have all the lessons. It's that easy. If you want to do, yeah. So if you want to do the cut and paste, you do the downloadable, you're free. You still, even online, you're still going to be printing off activity sheets for the children in their class. Like if they have a coloring activity, you're going to color. I'm really aging myself. 
I remember going back to kindergarten and first grade, I would come to school and I would have a little sheet that we had to color and it had to do with the classroom. It's going to be the same thing. So it's not like you don't, just because you have the online tool, you're not going to have things to print off. But it's just there ready for you to print off. You don't have to develop it, most certainly. That was the one room, almost. <laughs> He's going to pay. Yes. Well, thank you very much for your attention and being involved with it. And you can pick up, you can see Wayne over at the Safer 3 table. You could see Mick and myself at the USA Swimming table. Get my business card if you want to get an online, uh, to, uh, to review online. We can give you a username for that. And I'm going to give it up for the next presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue.